and welcome to the Tournament Center. I'm Randy Bueller. I'm standing with got to be the hottest player in the Pro Tour right now. He wins Pro Tour Berlin. He wins Grand Prix Atlanta. Luis Scott Vargas has got to win this tournament if he wants to be player of the year, but I wouldn't put it past him. <laughs> Five ones on day one, and now you have drafted this. Tell, tell us about this draft deck. Um, I started out taking Vivian Stinger over Naya Charm and Esper Battle Mage because it's the least color commitment, and it's, I think, okay. pretty close in power level to a Naya Charm, actually, even. I actually really like the Stinger, but second pick was where it was Seaside Citadel or Tide Hollow Strix. Yep, yep. And I actually like drafting Naya, and even though this doesn't add red, it still is good in Naya. And okay. then Strix would put me straight into Grixis, three colors also. And right. so they're both a three color commitment, but I, I've been liking Naya more actually. Okay, then what happened? Uh, I followed up with, uh, I think Druid of the Anima was next. Well, my notes said, yeah. <laughs> remember so far? Um, and after a few picks, I kind of wish I had gone Grixis because there was a bunch of Firefield Ogres and Tide Hollow Strixes. There were a bunch of Strixes. It's true. But uh, at the end of pack one, I was uncommitted as to Naya or Bant. Yeah, I had a Vithian Stinger. Fourth pick went Bant. Yeah, Panorama. Bant Panorama. And then Excommunicate and then another Druid. So I just had a bunch of green white cards. I have two Rockcaster Platoons. So you took Rockcaster Platoon over a Yoked Plow Beast. Right. I was surprised by that pick. Is this guy bad? I really like the cycling. Am I just overrating that or is this guy is this no, guy really better? No. Yoke Plow Beast is really good. I mean, it could be anything when you cycle it. So, but Rockcaster Platoon is a more powerful card. And okay. with, with, with at this point, I think I had two Druid of the Animas. Yeah, you did. And it's not un unreasonable to pick up another one. Um, That's fair. So you the Rockcaster is a little more powerful. Yeah. yeah. So if you're going to cast it, you'd rather have the Platoon. It's a question of is yeah. the cycling valuable. But you think at that point with two Druids, would you always make that pick, Platoon over? Uh, uh, just about, Plow yeah. Beast? Like. Especially since it's pretty easy to pick up another Plow Beast or Ridge Ran or Jungle Weaver, although Jungle Weaver is the best. Sure. Whereas Platoon, you know, is uncommon. It's less likely to see. And I'd, I'd rather have like a Platoon and a Plow Beast than two Plow Beasts. Okay. So tell me about Pack Two. Uh, pack Two, I opened. First pick. Um, Drum Hunter. Yeah, Drum Hunter. Yeah, I actually like Drum Hunter quite a bit. He's is he first pick. Is that? Yeah, I, I don't mind first picking him. I, I take like the premium removal spells over him, like yeah. Oblivion Ring or any of the red spells, but they weren't in the pack, so. So he seems particularly good if you've got the five drops up here, right? Yeah. Was that the way you draft Naya? Are you yeah, I, I, five drops I, five I don't powers? usually draft the, like, Nakato Squire Naya deck. Okay. Even though it's good, I, I, I like the five drop, the five power version, where you play, like, Druids and Drum Hunters as Accelerants, and then, okay. yeah, just, just guys like Mastodon and uh, Rake Cog Gargantuan. You know, sure. I didn't get all of them, but there's so many of them, like Cavern Thoctar, they're interchangeable. Now, those are two distinct decks, right? Is that when people are drafting Naya, they should know which one they are in general? Yeah, it, it changes your valuation. Like, Drew the Anima is a lot better in this deck. And a Cross and Square is. For that matter, yeah, right? definitely. And a Cross and Square is better in the other deck, but, I mean, it's still a playable card. It's still a good card. Sure, sure. So the playables go to good cards, and the good cards go to playables. Whereas, yeah, like something like Soul's Fire is really good in this version of the deck. Right. It's not as impressive in the other one. Yeah, so pack two, you went. Drum Hunter, Druid, Mastodon, fourth pick, Welkin guy. Is this guy fourth pick? Is that? I don't like to fourth pick him, but that pack was pretty shallow. It was that or like a Naya Panorama, I think. And yeah, or like the Guardian, the Wall. Which yeah, is I don't really like the Guardian at all. So, okay. uh, and not but, much Exalted. You wind up with only one Exalted yeah. card, because that's the other side of the deck, and you just don't value those cards as much. As yeah, people, I well, and I think even in the Exalted deck, I really don't like Guardian that much. It's just, <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't, I don't like the Wall aspect. Like, I'd rather have another threat. Um, but yeah, Welkin God certainly does a lot of damage out of nowhere. Okay, so you got no problem with two of them in the deck. Yeah. Not hoping to fourth pick it. No, of course not, but right. it, you yeah. know. Well, things got a little better. Six pick, this gift falls into your lap. Yeah. Rome Razor six, this got to be just exactly what. Yeah, Rome Razor is perfect. Like, especially with all the Druids, it's a good card to turbo out. Oh, yeah. And it's good with the Druids because you can still cast spells afterwards. Oh, but seven pick, <laughs> bombs weren't done coming. Yeah. Here comes Imperial Archangel, seven pick. Yeah, which was nice too because I had the Seaside Citadel and a Bant Panorama, so I was pretty well situated to splash it. Yeah, two free sources of blue. I thought the same thing at the time. Yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, easy, easy to run that. Yeah. You picked up another Bant Hammer in the third deck, so yeah. you wind up with one island in the deck, four blue sources for, for an eight mana spell. It's yeah, really it, easy it, to it, run, right? Easy enough, in fact, that Wave Skimmer even made the cut. Yeah, I mean, that, that four blue sources for a Wave Skimmer isn't like ideal, but I think it should be okay, and I'm, I'm not particularly worried about it. So, fourth Druid came, eighth in the second pack. Pack three, first pick was Naya Charm. Yeah, Naya Charm. I mean, once you know your Naya, like it's yeah. it's really really good. I, I just don't like taking the charms first because you don't really have control of what your neighbor's doing. Okay, so. so in pack one, you don't want triple color. You want to no. get a signal before you. But once you're triple color, you definitely want to just take all the triple color cards because they're the, they're like the best cards. Yeah, they're the fair. most powerful. Thoktar falls in your third pick. That had to be pretty happy. Oh, especially with all the druids, it, like it's very easy to cast in turn three if you play a druid on turn two. And Absolutely. Thoktar is one of the more unfair cards in the set. And six pick. 
Soulspire and Wild Coddle staring at you, and Mastodon yeah. like coming in yeah. third place in that pack, I guess. Yeah, I mean, if the if Soulspire wasn't there, I definitely would have taken the Coddle. But yeah. uh, as it tr like as I was looking, I wanted another removal spell, and Soulspire is very good when you've got a bunch of just <laughs> big <doof> doofuses. <laughs> right now, how good is uh, Gift of the Gargantuan? That's the card you took next. Um, it's it's okay. Like it's not a card I'm like exceptionally thrilled about, but it's good when you want to try to cast seven mana guys. Okay. It finds you a land and it finds you a guy. So, I mean, a lot of people are saying this card does nothing. Too often it's draw one card. I could just be playing a cycler. And I, if you're up. playing like 14 or more creatures, I think it's usually not going to miss. Like, I, that, that's about the threshold I, I'm comfortable where I'm going to hit like more, way more often and than that. In particular, not. if that land is valuable in a deck like this. Yeah, like if you're playing in a lower curve deck, the land is a blank almost. So, but in a deck with two seven drops and an eight drop, Okay. Now, is it the deck you want to draft in general? It seems like a pretty good archetype. I'm curious, like, how good is this as Naya decks go, and is this the kind of thing you're sitting uh, down this, this, to This is a reasonable Naya deck. I, I wish I had, like, an Oblivion Ring, just like every deck, you know? Okay. But, because I, I really only have got Soul's Fire and Naya Charm as, like, offensive removal. I've got an Excommunicate and Resounding Silence. They're a little, uh, yeah, they're a little more situational. The other thing was uh, Manuel Bucher was to my right, and yes. I know he really likes blue, so okay. I purposely stayed out of that, that's why I didn't take the Strix. Yeah, this was a sick table. I mean, you had Manuel B passing to you, Murinley Barrett passing yep. to him, Andre Mueller passing to him. Bunch of, bunch of good players at 5-1. Yeah, yeah, and then feature matches in your next I, I could have had a Sharoom second second pack pick two. Yeah, I saw that. But, yeah. Too many colors you weren't playing, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I just wasn't in the deck for it at all, but it's it's a shame to pass such a powerful card. <laughs> so do you always draft Naya? No, I mean, I don't know, I always draft it, but uh, I end up Naya or Jund a lot. Like, okay. Like at Atlanta, I like almost forced Esper, but since then it's been actually harder. Like people have been drafting it more, okay. and so I've been less inclined to take it. Well, there you go, Luis got Vargas on how to draft Shards of Alara. <laughs> You're gonna be drafting it too. This will be worth studying, taking an eye on how the pros draft this format. LSV is five one. We got 12 rounds of worlds left to go. Find out if he'll be playing on Sunday again. <laughs> For the tournament center, this is Randy Bueller.